Please stand as you're able for today's scripture reading. From Luke 14, 1 and 7 through 14. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is the word of the Lord. So, for those of you who were with us last week when Pastor Barry was talking about um, finding, finding report cards, it kind of got me thinking about old stuff that I have kept. And I've got this little book that has a school picture from every year, kindergarten on forward, that my mom helped me make. And uh, so I was kind of looking at this, and then I was reading this scripture, and it reminded me of some things that happened in my childhood that I will share with you. Well, before we dig into that, let's just pray one Pray one more time, just briefly, let this message be what God wants it to be. (sighs) Precious Jesus, we thank you for your actions and your words, how you guide us how to live. You call us to where we belong, Lord, in both this world and the next. Prepare our hearts, Lord, to experience who you truly are as inviting friend, redeemer of our souls, that we may gratefully receive the bread and the cup representing your sacrificial love. May we be filled to overflowing with your grace and live lives of abundant compassion to others in thankful response. Amen. So as some of you remember, I'm originally from DeSmit, South Dakota. I was born at the local hospital, and I grew up attending Laura Ingalls Wilder Elementary and DeSmit High School the whole 13 years. I was right there. So I grew up there, but I didn't always feel like I belonged there. When I first read the lectionary passage this week that was just shared by Peggy, um, you know, these memories came back, and I've been looking at this book anyway, and these memories of the very first birthday party I was ever invited to came back to me. So I remember getting this invitation. It was a printed invitation. I'd never seen one before, the kind where you write in, like, where it's at and when it's at and all the things. And I was so excited and I was so like, wow, what is this? I've never done this before. And it had Batman on it. And at that point in my life, so I was five or six years old, home was really where I wanted to be. You know, school was okay, church was fine, running errands with mom was survivable. But home was so much better. Everything was familiar. The dogs were there, the cat was there, my room was there. Even, you know, family was there, even though we may not get along all the time, but I, I felt like I belonged. I knew how things operated. I, you know, it was familiar. It wasn't perfect, but I belonged there. Yet, I looked at that invitation, and I remember part of me, at least, really, really wanted to go to that party. And when I looked Back to kindergarten year in this memory book, I see the child who invited me. He's actually listed as one of my best friends in kindergarten. I vaguely remember feeling strongly that I should go, but I had this even stronger voice of doubt telling me all the reasons I shouldn't. I had never been to this kid's house before. I hadn't played with him at school. I didn't know him that well. 
I mean, I had played with him at school, but I didn't know him that well. I mean, you know, how much do you really learn about somebody just, you know, building a block wall together? It just seemed a little scary. I didn't know who else would be there. Was it all going to be boys and me? Ugh! And would they accept me, no matter who was there? But it was a small town. If I'd thought about it, odds were I would know everybody there. <laughs> but I was really afraid I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know how to act. There are all sorts of issues I could name in my head to give me butterflies about it. And deep down, I was just afraid I didn't belong, even though I had been invited. And I was afraid that I would mess up somehow in front of everybody and make it obvious that I didn't belong. So in our scripture today, Jesus has also been invited by a prominent Pharisee to this Sabbath meal. And it wasn't the first time he had dined with these people. He had been invited again this time. And according to the passage, he was being carefully watched. And from Jesus' actions, it's evident he wasn't worried about if he belonged or not. Now, as a reminder, Jesus was considered a a rabbi, a teacher at this point of his, of his life. And the Pharisees, well, they were a sect of Judaism focused on correct interpretation and exact following of Mosaic law. They had carefully defined how to apply everything that was presented in the Torah, the first five books that we call the Old Testament. They knew how to apply it to any given situation so that you could remain in right relationship with God. And from those defined applications, the Pharisees had developed what was called the oral law, or tradition of the elders. People who followed the law, according to the Pharisees, they belonged. So it was the belief of the Pharisees that if they could teach the Jewish people exactly the right way to follow the Mosaic law, God would send the Messiah in response. They had to live the right way first, in order to be fully claimed by God. So in light of that, we can see where correct behavior was incredibly important to the Pharisees. And we can see that they were certain what correct behavior was. And that maybe makes it a little easier to understand why they would keep such a close eye on Jesus, this new teacher who had such a fast-growing following, was doing incredible signs of power, healing, even on the Sabbath? which they saw as especially problematic. Because no one was supposed to work on the Sabbath, and the Pharisees considered healing to be work. Never mind, it might just be somebody stretching out their hand, or standing up, or being touched. Jesus was likely invited by the Pharisees for the purpose of being watched for correct behavior, to see if he would act how they thought was right, or if he would continue to break the Jewish law as they saw it. Now, to be accurate, not all the Pharisees were against Jesus. Not all of them were interested in trapping him. A few of them were at least sympathetic to Jesus and Christians later. And some of them were downright open to his message. But it appears most of them were not. And likely also because he was constantly inviting people close who the Pharisees thought did not belong. The poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Jesus would heal, he would feed, he would teach people regardless of status, regardless if they knew all the rules the Pharisees taught. They were all invited as far as Jesus was concerned. They were on his guest list. But as a reminder, this wasn't Jesus' house the story takes place in. It was a prominent Pharisee's. So to help us imagine this setting and what is going on in the scripture, here are a few cultural points of the day you may already be familiar with, but it was common in that culture for the most important guests to arrive later. And where people sat at the meal reflected their importance in, relation in relationship to the host and within the community. So the table would be low to the ground and U-shaped. And the host would, would so if your U is like this, the host sits at the bottom of the U. There were no chairs, and there might be some cushions, and where the host sits, to the left and the right, are the most important places. Those are the best seats in the house. People would lean on their left elbow and then eat with their right hand. 
and their legs would be pointing away from the table, and they'd all be talking. But can you imagine sitting on the floor, legs out, new people coming in, having to shift your position, walking around? And these rooms were not that big. So all the kerfuffle of <laughs> people moving around. So Jesus is there earlier than anybody else, and he watches the other guests arrive from wherever he is at that table for the Sabbath meal. And I can imagine that repeated upheaval as people enter and are greeted and get settled, and then somebody else comes in and says, oh, wait, no, he's better. We've got to move. The embarrassment, the walk of shame as you go to your other spot, all because of this status stance that the Pharisees had said, yeah, that's, can we, that's what we can do. Jesus points out that, that, that what may seem obvious to us today, but which flew in the face of the cultural practices of the time, how thinking we are in charge of finding our own place at the table, being consumed with our own importance, that's what puts us to shame. Being an invited guest at the table should include trusting humility and allowing our host to help us find the place where we belong. So back to that birthday invitation from my childhood, I, I do remember selecting a present for the birthday boy at the local Coast to Coast hardware store. Remember Coast to Coast? Yeah. A Batman bicycle horn. My mother helped me wrap it, and then the day of the party came, and I chickened out. I didn't go. I gave him the present anyway, and I, and I thought that would be okay. But months later, when my birthday came around, I invited him to my party. And the day of the party arrived, and sure enough, he didn't come. And I was disappointed. And when I saw him at school later, I said, so why didn't, why didn't you come to my party? And he said, well, you didn't come to mine. Which brings me back to the second part of our scripture. Jesus had particular words for the Pharisee who had invited all these people to this dinner that day. And those words can speak to us, too. To consider who should be on that guest list. His words fly again in the face of common practices at the time. Because the poor, crippled, lame, and blind that Jesus says should be invited were not in those days. They didn't belong at the Pharisee's table. They may have shown up on their own, but they were not invited as honored guests. So what is our mindset when we make our guest lists? When we decide who we will talk to or be friends with, what is our criteria? Are we looking for people who are just like us? Or are we willing to reach further than that, like Jesus does? And then there's the big question. Who do we invite to come close to God? Who will we pray with? Who do we choose to help and heal through the love of Jesus Christ? The guest list shouldn't include only the folks we're comfortable with and who can return the favor. Jesus says the blessing doesn't come in the form of getting back what we, what we give to the people now. It comes back to us and blessing is from the Most High later. And what else does that mean? Well, it means exactly when we aren't expecting it, when we feel like we don't belong. And yes, this happens, I know, even after we accept Jesus Christ, when we consider ourselves outcasts and misfits and unacceptable, when we are having those feelings of, I am not enough, we are exactly the people who Jesus is inviting. He is calling our name, and he is saying, you, come close. You, you are invited. I have the best seat for you. Come and eat. Have your fill, and know that you belong with me here. That is what Jesus says. He calls us. And when we choose to say yes and come to his table, in spite of our fears, we will also be blessed. Let us pray. 
Precious Heavenly Lord, we thank you. We thank you that no matter what we think of ourselves, no matter what we think of anyone, you call us all. You call us all to your heart, and you are prepared to receive us. Lord God, help us to see you with clear eyes and hear you with open ears and open heart. Give us a vision of who you call us to love and how to do that so we can invite others to your table, to this relationship with you, Lord. We thank you so much. We thank you so much for your call and that we are all invited. Amen.